We are joined right now by a former NBA player. In fact, he played 15 years in the league for seven teams. He was selected with the ninth pick overall in 1997 by the Raptors out of Mount Zion Christian Academy. A seven-time All-Star, a two-time scoring champ. He averaged just under 20 per game for his entire career, inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2017, and... I'm all about content. He's got a new Showtime documentary series, Bonded by Ball, Inside the OBL. Documentary drops on Friday. My guest is Tracy McGrady. He joins us via Zoom. Tracy, it's been a minute. It's great to have you back on. How are you? Doing well, Rome. You've been on air for a long time, my friend. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Tracy, it is great to see you. I appreciate you, man. I was saying off the air to my guys that we used to have great conversations when you played, so it's really good to see you. How differently, Tracy, do you have to be built or wired to play and dominate one-on-one basketball? Yeah, yeah. First, you got to be highly skilled, right, for one-on-one basketball. And then I, I think when it comes down to it, you're on an island by yourself, and that mentally has to be something that you have to be tapped into. You got to be men- mentally tough, physically tough, and uh, you got to be able to take it as well as dish it out. And it's just a gauntlet that you're in. And good luck while you're out there because you don't have a seven footer behind you altering shots or blocking shots or somebody on the left or the right of you to slow a guy down. And, you know, that's that's the beauty of it, man. You just got to, you got to show grit. You got to show fight. fight. Tracy, you're a Hall of Famer. I'm curious, why is this thing so personal to you, and why do you identify with these guys the way you do? Well, I go back to when I was a junior in high school in in Florida, and I was a good basketball player my junior in high school, but outside of my region, no one knew who I was. It wasn't until after I completed my junior season, I had a guy that was affiliated with Adidas come down to my high school, give me an invite, to the Adidas camp, which I've never heard about. And, you know, it's this platform where it's the top uh, high school basketball players in the nation all competed against each other. And I went to this camp and it put me on the map. Once I left this camp, everyone knew who T Mac was. And I ended up becoming the number one player in the country. So I went from unknown to the number one player in the country because of this platform. And what I'm creating for these guys out here is just this platform. People should know about these guys because they have a, a unique skill set and the ability to play basketball. basketball. We're talking to Tracy McGrady. Like, how unique? For instance, when you look at season number one, you went to seven different cities. How many of these guys would you say have an NBA-level game but just didn't make the league for whatever reason? Well, I, I would say out of all the guys that I've seen last season, uh, I would say there are potentially one or two that could possibly make it. Um, I think what we did last year, we didn't get the best of the best of the talent that was out there because there have been so many companies trying to do one-on-one tournaments. You know, I think the best players were sitting back watching to see what this really was. Coming back for 24 season, I think we're going to get the best players that you possibly can have out here that are not on an NBA uh, roster, that are not not on a G League roster, and guys that's probably not even playing across seas. So we would get top-notch level competition and elite talent that's not on those levels. We're talking to Tracy McGrady. So when you look back on your career in the NBA, who was the single toughest matchup you ever had one-on-one? Come on, Jim. I mean, you know <laughs> I, I know the answer yeah. to the question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Go ahead. Give it to me. So, I mean, it's Kobe, man. Kobe. You know, of course. Kobe is arguably of course. one of the, the, the greatest. And it, when you talk about one-on-one basketball, he is that. <clears throat> I know the answer to it, which is why I asked it, but I want to go one step further. Tracy, he, listen, I try to be as real and as objective as I can possibly be, but Kobe Bryant is one of the athletes that I appreciated most of all in the decades I've done this. He once paid you the ultimate compliment when he said that you were the toughest player he ever had to guard. What did that praise mean to you coming from him? And what do you remember about those legendary battles that you had with the Mamba? Yeah, I think when you when it all you know boils down to is you know you want the respect for your from your peers. Um, you know the media says stuff, fans says stuff, but you know what really matters is the guys that you know 
you have to compete against every single night that you you garner that respect from. And to to hear that from, you know, Kobe is one of the arguably his best player uh, to ever play this game. I mean, that's 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 respect right there. And I have, you know, uh, you know, the utmost respect for for him as a person and as a player. I would, that was my brother, man. And, you know, it, it really meant a lot to me coming from him. But, you know, that's what it's all about, man. You, you, you definitely want that respect from your peers. And to hear that from Cole just meant a lot to me. Tracy, one more thing about Kobe. You credit him also with helping to elevate your game in the sense that he worked with you the summer after your rookie season. What can you tell us about training with him in Paris in 1998? Uh, that we were playing a game, we were training, and he was playing a game of one-on-one that I didn't know about. <laughs> That's a story. So if you ever heard of a story about Kobe being right. one-on-one, we were working on our skills and training, and in his mind, we were playing one-on-one. I didn't know anything about it. But anyways, but I just picked up a, a lot of gems from him. Um, Kobe was such a, a student of, of the game. Um, he was a technician. Uh, he, he did a lot of studying the game. He did a lot of watching film. He did a lot of having conversations with the greats. So to be with him over a summer and, and soak up all the, the, the knowledge and his work ethic, I mean, it was it did wonders for my career. Um, you know, he was the guy that told me, you know, playing pickup basketball in the offseason really is not that helpful for you. Now, for me, it was all about the skill training for him, it was all about the skill training. It may not work for other guys because I know a lot of other guys play pickup basketball instead of working on their skills. But I, for me, you know, that's what really propelled me and elevated me to a whole nother level when I just worked on my skills instead of just playing pickup basketball in the offseason. Tracy McGrady joins me for a few more moments. You know, when you think about this notion of one-on-one, it's kind of fun to think about things hypothetically. As an example, like in their prime, imagine a one-on-one matchup between, say, Kevin Durant and Kevin Garnett. How do you think that would go? That's funny you said that because I I did an interview and that was the two guys that I named that I wanted to see. You know, you got you got two seven-footers, highly skilled guys, uh, unicorns, if you will. And KG just brings a, you know, a, a different dynamic with the trash talking, trying to get inside your head. And, and KD is one that doesn't back down from that highly skilled. I would love to see one-on-one between these two right here. That would have been my CTV. Tracy, really quickly, I'm glad you said that. You mentioned a unicorn, a seven-footer. You know, virtually nothing lives up to the hype, right? Well... Well, it's been a long time since we've seen anybody hyped as much as Victor Wembayama. When Benyama ends up in the exact, in a great spot, right? He's in San Antonio, so he's got all the support he needs. But, I mean, the hype is just insane. Do you think that he will live up to all of that? Can anybody? I, I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. It's a way to see game. The kid is young. He needs to get familiar with the game. But what I do know is he's surrounded by greatness and will soak up all the advice. He's going to have everything that he needs to reach that level of, of greatness. Uh, will it happen? We all got to sit back and watch. But yeah, the hype is too much. It, 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 it is too much because it's like we're setting this kid up to fail. If he doesn't live up to it, then we're going to be bashing him. I just don't like how you know we're, we're building him up um, before he's even played an NBA game. Just you know, let this kid live, man, and get familiar with our game, and and you know, be taught by one of the greatest coaches. Um, get the influence from Tim Duncan and, and David Robinson and those guys, but. I agree, man. It's, it's been too much. Hey, Tracy, before I have you direct our listeners and our viewers to the doc, one last thing. What do you make of James Harden trying to force his way out of Philly, trying to get away from Joel Embiid to get to L.A.? Like, if you had to guess, what do you think that he's thinking? Uh, I don't know what James is thinking. I don't know. I don't know why you want to leave a situation where you actually could compete for a championship. Like that's what we play for. And you playing with the MVP and want, I, I don't know, man. Like I said before, I think it's something deeper than, you know, all of us know about because there is no way you're on a team that can contend for a championship. And you were one game away from playing in the Eastern conference. And I think, you know, having Joel on your Joel and beat as your teammate to face Miami Heat, 
I think him being the MVP and, and Miami not having anybody to really uh, defend him, I think that propels y'all to at least play the Denver Nuggets in the finals. I don't know why you want to leave that. It's just, to me, it makes no sense. All right, so Tracy, it is so good to get caught up with you. I know that the OBO itself, the play, the league is going to return in 2024, but the doc is going to drop shortly. Remind our viewers and our listeners where they can find that doc bonded by a ball inside the OBL. When and where can they see it? Doc is dropping Friday on Showtime platform, uh, Show Basketball, and uh, Paramount as well. So, you know, go check that out. Drop in Friday at 10 o'clock. It's a four-part series. Showtime did a wonderful job on this doc, and it'll give you an insight of one-on-one basketball and also telling some great stories of the guys that participated in OBL. I love it. Tracy McGrady, my guest. Tracy, it had been far too long. So good to get caught up, my man. Good luck with that, and uh, great to talk to you once again. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jim. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell to be the first to know when we do upload a new video.